Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. I got an email from somebody there in the UK. I uh, just want to say g'day to them. Thanks for the email. They gave me this great little link to what looks like a Tamagotchi toy, basically something to keep you entertained or something for the kids. After looking at it, I was very surprised because this is a kick, kick fund me page, Kickstarter, and they wanted eighty-three thousand five hundred sixty. Five hundred, sorry, six hundred fifty-five dollars was their goal. They're up to four and almost four and a half million. So that was interesting to me. So I thought I'd go through and actually read about it because I thought if he sent it to me, there's probably a little bit more to this story than just a little Tamag Tamagotchi toy that you're going to play with. So I started reading through, and I noticed a lot of things about this, and you can start to see it: Bluetooth, uh, NFC, and basically what this little tool is is it is a recording device for frequencies and you can use it basically for a number of different different things I mean when I saw this I thought oh yeah why would I want one but after reading about it I kind of do want one I want one because I can store every fob every access control every garage door remote that I come across of every building that I service in this one little device and even some that I don't even service if I go to a building sometimes and I've got to park in the visitor parking it's behind a roller door I can simply just go there, push this button, learn somebody's remote as they're going in and out, and then I can store it on this device and have it for whenever I want to go back there and park there. So at least that way I can get in and get out and do my job. So for me, I would say, yeah, what a great little tool. Um, for that one reason, that's why I'd buy it. So this thing can emulate, um, well not emulate, it can basically uh, simulate RFID tags, radio frequency, infrared, the list goes on, NFC, blah, blah, blah. So it's got a lot of handy little functions. And what's better is you get a cute little dolphin on it too, which I'm not sure if it works like a bit of a Tamagotchi or so, but I think it does a little bit and says, um, you know, keep pushing me or hi, mate, let's play. Do you think, on well, this one here, you think I'm a joke, you know? Okay. Well, basically, this little tool has a lot of bang for buck. And at the moment, um, it's going pretty cheap. And for the money, I think I'll definitely be getting one. Very interesting little tool. You can change, you can, you know, basically just go to it go to a TV remote control, put in the brand and start changing the channel on the TV. You can hook it up to your computer for two point uh, authorization for some of your accounts. So you can use it as an extra added security feature. And if you look at the frequencies, they're quite quite intense there. You know, they're most of the most of the good ones we use just about on everything. So looking over this device, I can see it's going to be very useful uh, in a lot of ways for us, but it is basically a little uh, hacker's device as well. And I can see because it's open source, it's going to get exploited. If it can be, people will. And it's basically a very good platform for people to start um, hacking and cracking particular types of frequencies or codes uh, on particular systems. So it's good to know because we do install access control systems and digital locks and things. It's good to know there's a little tool out there like this, which might actually be, um, how do you say, make our products less secure. So when you're out there selling an access control system and you're saying, oh, these cards can't be copied, oh, the swipe card's very secure, it's good to know whether or not they are or not. Because if somebody brings out a little cheap device like this and it defeats them, well, then we need to know about it, especially when we're selling it to our clients for security purposes. So I'm going to be getting one. I'm going to be playing with one. I encourage all you uh, locksmiths, hackers and crackers, you know, all locksmiths are hackers and crackers. That's how we make our money. We pick locks. We defeat things that were meant to keep people out. And then we sell them to other people to keep people they want to keep out. So it's one of those things. You've got to kind of know what's in the industry and know, um, you know, what's out there so that when we sell a product, we know whether or not it can be defeated, how hard it is to be defeated, and what products are out there defeating it. So this one here, they've simulated an RFID tag. Uh, works as an emulator card on 125 um, kilohertz. That's nothing too new. And we did also look at the RFID copy. Uh, little tool here and I showed you how to you know that was used and how I could simply just copy a tag from a simple access control system for later use. I did also look at another website here just going off topic real quick and um, you know he's saying that he does uh, all these RFID tags. Now they install a lot more access control than we do but the thing about it is that if our tags are copyable we need to be able to inform our customers whether they are or not they keep bringing out new systems new encryptions new this new that but with a platform like this flipper and the software that can be um, open sourced and people can work on it it doesn't take long for things to get hacked and cracked especially when it's digital so nothing's really that secure when it's kind of digital so it's good to know 
Uh, down the bottom here, I just want to have a quick look here. Uh, do not copy your RFID tag swipe cards. Uh, simply order new extra key and add them sequentially numbered to your security system management. That's the right way of doing it. But I think we all know that if it can be copied, people will copy it. And it's just a matter of time until things become even more easier to copy, such as looking at some of the uh, car transponder chips. Sooner or later, the GTI chip or the multi chips come out, and then we can use one chip to do a number of different um, platforms, a number of different uh, transponder IDs. So it's going to be the same sort of thing. Um, but I do like this device. I will be getting one for myself, but I get the feeling that you know this type of device could simply go bad. Uh, you know, if there are enough people sort of put the effort into it, it could definitely go bad. I looked it up before placing that, and I, it was under on this web page uh, forum. Uh, dot dangerous things dot com and I think we could be looking at something along those lines and um, you're right if uh, somebody mentioned FBI and things like that up here if F FBI was to get a device like this and work this little device yeah they would have access into a lot of places um, via electronic that probably they shouldn't or it could be um, hackers or who knows what some smart age criminals too could be actually quite clever enough to actually use this device in a lot of bad ways so it is interesting. I mean, you might just be jumping out of your, your locksmithing van, walk over to do a job, and somebody's used this device, copied your remote, and sure enough, they can go clean out your car afterwards. It could be as simple as that. Now, is this device legal? Well, it is because it's like any other product. It comes unloaded. You actually have to load it, download the software, the patches and things that you want to put on it. So on that respect, they've um, got themselves covered. But it's got so many uh, breakout boards, so many possibilities, that um, it's going to be very interesting to see where this little device goes. And that's why I'll be buying one to play around with it to see what it actually can do. Uh, just looking at the diagram over here, you've got a really good battery in it. You've got a 125 antenna. It actually does eye buttons as well. You've got uh, multi antenna there as well. I don't know why it says 433. It does other ones as well. And it's got a little touch screen and a little dolphin on the front. So pretty cool. The new model I don't think has this SD card on the front, but that's okay and it is on Kickstarter now so if you want to do like I'm doing and throw a hundred bucks at it you can order your first one and then we'll see where it goes from there because as soon as people start you know smarter people than me get on the computer and they start actually working this little device to complete particular functions who knows maybe it might be able to go through a random number of codes for a car if you're locked out of a Mercedes or or a Mitsubishi maybe it might be able to go through the different codes and pop it open there is a lot of uh, possibilities here. It also can, um, you know, do the car remotes, kind of look at the car remotes as well. And with a lot of these new, um, like, key, do key DIY and Xtool ones, a lot of the time they're using the same um, code on each remote, and you're programming in the same code. So you might have a car that might open up another car eventually. With that being said, if you get all those general codes that they're using for particular cars, this little device, if it's openware, and you can sort of add to it and mess around with it, how hard would it be to continually go through until you can kind of find a code that's um, suitable? So they're just a couple of things there just to note. Um, you know, you're basically programming your RFID card, then you can use it and swipe. You can do I buttons as well, which is kind of interesting. You don't actually need that I button. And where the person supplying the I button's thinking, oh no, this is the only I button, you can't get a copy, you've now got a copy. So who knows where that will lead. In this one here, uh, U2F basically, that means you plug it into your computer. Before you get into your Gmail or Hotbox, it's a second level of uh, defense. So you'll actually need to go to your little flipper, get the code, put it in as a second line of defense, which I think is a really good handy tool. Uh, infrared, um, USB, everything you could want. Change channel on various remote controls, a thousand remote controls all built in as well. I don't know uh, why you'd need that, but you might. It's open source, so it means that everyone can have pretty much a go at it and anything is possible. And you can just basically pay people to make whatever you really want. All different types of platforms and no drivers required, which is really good. Um, extend your own plugins, hardware hacking tool, moving along. And what is it, three volts logic level. You can basically do your own homework on this little device and see what you think of it. Uh, this is an expansion board here, so somebody's made an expansion board and they just simply just plug it into the back of it. So I think these little breakout boards are going to be interesting too. I mean, what a little good little tool if it helps us in our lock spinning industry to be able to pick up the code, crack the code, or get something open quicker than what we already do. 
and I believe those little boards just being plugged in the back there can be made. So I think we might see little boards in the future and we all might be having one of these little tools with us. Uh, here you can download a package basically and it's just going to uh, you know operate your computer and tell it what to do. You program it in and, and you know it'll push so many buttons all pre-recorded package. So very interesting little um, device. I'll purchase one. I uh, just wanted to give you the heads up on it so you can read for yourself, see what you think about it and um, yeah make out what you want and see the potential that it has. Maybe I'm a bit paranoid of the potential that it has, but I reckon it might be out there as one of those devices that um, is a platform for to allow you to do other things, just like a mobile phone. They sell you the mobile phone, but you can do some bad things with a mobile phone if you want to. And I believe it's kind of like that. With all the antennas, the Bluetooth, the NFC, the frequencies, the RFID, you know, there's a lot there, plus also the, the platform that you can work on, and it's all shareware. And here, here you go, $119 early bird special, um, and they've really kicked off a lot of money. So I'm not the only one who's uh, seen this, and um, a lot of people have basically dropped four million bucks in it, so everybody likes it. Right now they're at um, the Kickstarter stage, which is here, so they're going to go to tooling, and eventually they'll be on to shipping. So hopefully early next year, if you do it, you'll um, you'll get your tool. I went to the forum and it was funny how many people, uh, where's this forum just here, it's funny how many people say, yep, subscribed, yep, got one, yep, backing it, yep, backing it, backing it, backing it, but nobody's really talking about the risks and um, how this little tool could be a real big exploit for the you know wrong people in the wrong hands and um, what might leave us vulnerable in our society, like what simple systems we use right now to lift barriers or access control or open our cars or keep our roller doors closed what simple barriers we use using all these technologies might be now vulnerable a lot more when uh, people overseas start writing little patches or little bits of software to, to hack them or go through the various numbers just like any lock you know there's only a certain amount of key sometimes and with a little device like this, which is open shareware, there pro possibly is only a certain amount of codes or standard codes and, and things along those lines. It's all different, but on saying that, we'll have to wait and see. So that's the little device right there. Pretty cool. Um, I've got to get myself one. If you want to get yourself one, you just got to go over to uh, Kickstarter, and it's under Flipper. Where's Flipper? Okay. Where are you, Flipper? <laughs> Flipper Zero. Look at that money. A lot of money coming in for this. A lot of money and I think as any locksmith or security professional something we might want to actually keep our eye on might want to actually know how it works might want to use it for our own benefit but it might also want to know what it can defeat so that we can sell it to our customers and we'll sell the right products to our customers and not leave our customers vulnerable as security professionals if we recommend the wrong thing and our customers get hacked or cracked they're not going to be too happy with us so definitely worth noting leave your comments down there in the description and thanks for watching